Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to cover peak detector. So in this video, we are going to cover positive and negative peak detector. We are going to see circuit diagram, it's working and waveforms. Okay, let's start with the purpose of peak detector. Why do we need peak detector? We already have conventional AC voltmeters. So these AC voltmeters cannot measure the peak value of non-sinusoidal waveforms. Okay, because they are designed to measure RMS value of sine wave. So that's why peak detector circuit is used. Okay, so if you give square wave to this circuit, it will give you peak voltage of the square wave. Like here, 5 volt is peak voltage, you will get 5 volt at output. You must be wondering what if we want to measure peak voltage of sinusoidal waveforms. Yes, you can measure peak voltage of sine waves too. The peak voltage here in this waveform is 10 volt, so you will get 10 volt at output. Okay, so sinusoidal, non-sinusoidal, both waveforms are supported to peak detector. Now we will come back to the circuit. This is positive peak detector. The circuit is very simple if you see it in parts. Now first I will talk about op-amp. Op-amp is connected in voltage follower mode. So we all know what is voltage follower. In voltage follower, your output follows input. So whatever you will give at input side, it will come across output. Okay, basically there are no registers, but in this circuit, you will see this ROM and R. ROM is used for offset problems to minimize offset problems. Then R is used to protect your op-amp from this capacitor's discharge current. Ideally, your op-amp's input resistance will be infinite, but practically input impedance will not be infinite. So to protect op-amp, you will connect one resistor. So this left side part is just voltage follower. So your op-amp will follow input and VO is equal to VIN. Now this circuit is important here, this right side circuit. Now this is just load resistor. The main components are D1, D2 and C. Okay, there are two diodes and one capacitor. I'm going to explain you the working in detail, but just know the orientation of diodes. Your D2 will be connected in reverse and your D1 will be connected in forward. Okay. Now let's see the working. So this is my input signal. Okay. I'm giving square wave at input side, which has some VP as a peak voltage. So VP is my peak voltage, which I'm expecting at output side. So when we are in positive cycle, means we are in this part. Now look at D1 diode. Positive terminal of D1 diode will be at high potential. So it will get forward biased and D1 will start conducting. Now this path is closed, this path is closed. So now capacitor will start charging. Capacitor will start charging till the VP voltage. Okay, the available voltage across capacitor is VP, whatever peak voltage of your input signal. Now it's charging towards VP voltage. So in this process, your op-amp is acting as voltage follower. So output of your op-amp is nothing but VP here and which is coming across capacitor and this load register is connected across this capacitor. So in positive cycle, your capacitor will charge with VP voltage and that VP voltage will be passed to output voltage. Okay. So in every positive cycle of your input signal, D1 will get forward biased and your capacitor will charge with the maximum peak voltage. Now let's see what happens in negative cycle. So in negative half cycle, means in this part, now your D1 will be reverse biased because at this point there is already VP voltage, there is some peak voltage, okay. Now at this point of your diode, means at negative terminal of D1, already there is high potential. And now at this side, at positive terminal of diode, there is some negative voltage. So it is going to be reversed biased, means it is going to be off. So now this path is open circuit, okay. Now look at D2. What is D2 doing here? Now we are in negative half cycle and negative terminal of D2 diode is connected to output of this op-amp. So it will forward bias it and this path will be connected. This will be like short circuit. So your negative cycle is getting bypassed means your negative input is going to ground. So D2 is reverse bias, D2 is forward biased. What is the state of capacitor? Now capacitor had VP voltage. Now capacitor has no path to discharge. If you see in this path, there is open circuit because D1 is reverse biased. If you see this path, capacitor cannot discharge through this because ideally op-amp's input impedance is very high. So what will capacitor do? Capacitor will retain its charge. Your output will be still VP. So ideally you should get a 
constant output but your capacitor will discharge little bit again in positive cycle it will charge to the maximum value and it will again discharge little bit so you will get ripples in your output but ideally it should be constant okay. so this circuit is measuring positive peak of your input signal now let's take a look at some sinusoidal signals so here my input will be sine wave this red is my input the working will remain same in this positive half cycle your d1 will be on so your capacitor will charge towards this maximum peak voltage okay now if this is my 5 volt capacitor will have 5 volt across it in negative half cycle your d1 will be off capacitor will hold its charge so still my output is 5 volt now again in positive half cycle now my peak voltage is 10 volt so now again d1 will be on capacitor will charge with 10 volt then again in negative half cycle the cycle will continue and you will get 10 volt at output okay so this circuit is measuring the peak value of sine waves also okay now we will see negative peak detector now it is very simple to understand how negative peak detector will be formed we will reverse the direction of both diodes so d1 was connected in forward bias we will connect it in reverse and d2 we will connect in forward so d2 will bypass positive cycle like it was bypassing negative cycle in positive peak detector and d1 will conduct in negative cycle vice versa so there is nothing different in negative peak detector other than direction of diodes so for proper operation you need to know these equations c is value of your capacitor rd is resistance of diode and rl is your load resistor and t in this equation is time period of your input okay so c into rd means product of these two should be less than t upon 10 and c into rl should be greater than 10 times of t so in short the value of rd should be low and value of rl should be high so for proper operation you must follow these equations so i hope you have understood what is peak detector why do we need it what is positive peak detector how it's working how to draw output waveforms i hope you are all clear if you have understood this video please like the video and subscribe to my channel thank you